Did you know? Oddworld is actually the name of the planet where all the series of games takes place. Oddworld Inhabitants president and creative developer Lord Lanning has since explained that Oddworld's surface area is 10 times the size of Earth's. Oddworld is claimed to have at least five moons. However, the only moons currently known to exist are the Mudokan Moon and the Gabbit Moon. Even though the game series takes place on Oddworld, we're only given information of one continent, and that continent is Mudos. The terrain is quite rough and jagged. Mudos was originally home to just a few native species, such as the Grub Tribe and the Mudokan Civilization. But Gluckins arrived and quickly set up an industrial society, wiping out many species and putting others at risk. Lanning saw what was wrong with the world, as consumers were fed lives through the media. He disliked capitalism, and the big part of Lanning's games is they are filled with symbolism, such as mysticism versus consumerism. The Mudokins are the scrawny slaves that work away in the big factories. Abe is a part of the Mudokins, he's not the smartest or the strongest. He's the everyday guy, the character that people can relate to. The Gluckins are the big corporations overshadowing the little guy. Some say Abe's Odyssey is a representation of our world revealing a sad truth. There are two classes of Mudos, the industrial and the natives. Natives are the Mudokins, Gabbits, Grubs, and Steves. Mudokins and Gabbits live in Eastern Mudos. Grubs and Steve live in Western Mudos. In Munch's Odyssey, there were several more creatures revealed that live on Oddworld. These creatures were Vikers, Interns, Big Bro Sligs, and different species of Mudokins. Speaking of Mudokins, they actually have a religion and worship a god called Shrykal. Shrykal has the appearance of a scrab and paramite combined. The Shrykal has the body of a scrab, but its limbs represent a paramite's forelegs protruding from its midsection. It also has a fringe of paramite facial digits around its head, forming a sort of crown. The Mudokin who has gained the hand scars of the paramite and the scrab can become the avatar of this creature for a short period of time, gaining its powers. In Oddworld games, there is a feature called GameSpeak. The GameSpeak feature allows players to interact with non-playable characters. Examples of GameSpeak commands in the original game, Abe's Odyssey, are Hello, Follow Me, and Wait. Rescue Mudokins and opening certain doors are all achieved through GameSpeak. Landing wanted to create an original idea of an action-adventure platformer using this instead of giving the player a weapon. The weapons can be used by Sligs though once Abe controls them, and GameSpeak is also available to Sligs once Abe has possession of them. The objective of Munch's Odyssey is to save Munch and help his race come back by getting the last can of Gaviar. The Gaviar will be auctioned at Viker Labs, that is where large stockpiles of Mudokin eggs are being stored. The containers in Viker's Labs say Sam's labored eggs. Sam is the only known living female Mudokin. All of her eggs that are hatched are instantly born into slavery. The Vikers realize she laid fewer eggs when she was depressed. They used an AI unit called a Shrink to keep her company and comfort her. It is unknown what her relations or feelings towards her Mudokin offspring are. The fact she needs the shrink to keep her happy implies she would fall into deep depression at her offspring being taken away to be enslaved if it wasn't for the shrink taking her mind off it. Also, there's a character not really mentioned much because they were cut due to the time restraints of Munch's Odyssey. This character is Lady Margaret. She is the Glucking Queen and most likely the supreme ruler of the industrial society. She was due to face Moloch in the trial for matters relating to Abe, but there wasn't enough time to put her in. And like Sam, she was cut from Munch's Odyssey. Lady Margaret needed a new pair of lungs and would have gotten these new pair of lungs from the Gabbit Munch. The bad ending would say that the Glucking Queen gets a new pair of lungs from the Gabbit, and that Gabbit lungs are the new Gluck lungs. In the good ending, however, where she doesn't get the lungs, the bonus newspaper states she's on life support, so she isn't dead yet. Stranger's Wrath was originally planned for both Xbox and PS2 release, with Oddworld Inhabitants handling the Xbox and EA in charge of the PS2 port. But then, EA cancelled the PS2 version and proceeded to withdraw marketing and promotional support because it was no longer a multi-platform title. Landing said, It was very disheartening to us that we could have a title with a user metric 9.6 out of 10, a game that was praised as being a fusion of filmmaking video games in terms of being less gamey and more story and character driven. And then to see the largest publisher in the industry had no interest in marketing it regardless of how innovative it was. 
EA offered to buy Oddworld Inhabitants, but Landing saw this more as a hostile takeover rather than a smart business deal. Landing cut off any connection from big publishers and wanted no one but Oddworld Inhabitants to own the rights to Oddworld, since the other companies did not share the same visions as he did. Stranger's Wrath was supposed to be a sequel to Munch's Odyssey, but changed during development as many games do. As of right now, only two games of the Oddworld Quintology were made, Abe's Odyssey and Munch's Odyssey. For the game to be in the Oddworld Quintology, it has to have the word Odyssey in it. Next to this, and Stranger's Wrath were not part of the Quintology and were just made as bonus games to hold people over for the next sequel to be made. The third installment in the series was going to be Squeak's Odyssey, and Lanning said that the story was going to be even more messed up. He said the humor is going to be more twisted than dark, but yet still have the Oddworld feel of comedy to it. And from what we have seen from the previous games, that is truly saying something. Before I wrap up this video, I want to show you guys a couple more things I found out that I really couldn't work into the script. For those who don't know, these are the Meeches before they went extinct. These are the Gluckins without their suits on, they don't have much of a body and use their arms to walk. This is early concept art for the Raisin, many different designs for him. This is a Meedle that was supposed to be in the game Hand of Odd. And these are very early concept arts for Munch. He's a lot of different design choices for him that they could have went with, but I'm glad they went with the model I have now. But that is all I have for right now. Hopefully you enjoyed this and you learned something, because I know I learned a lot researching this, and I actually had a really fun time, because I, I love the Oddworld series, and I actually didn't know a lot about the things that they're, uh, the things that I researched. There were some things I put in there for people who didn't really play the game, and didn't probably didn't know, but... Hopefully the people that do play the game and follow the series, um, hopefully you learn something new, because I, I used to play the games all the time, follow the series, and I actually learned a lot about the series, the development, but that is all the time I have. I'm guessing you guys don't want to hear me ramble anymore. I just want to say thank you to Did you know Gaming or being a thing because I would have never thought to make a video and share information about a game series I really love. Um, big shout out to them, you're a huge inspiration. I love that you guys take the time to look up the res and research all this stuff about games and consoles and all that stuff. Props to you guys, you do a lot of work. I didn't realize this took so much work until I actually did it, but it was a really fun experience. Um, Go, go check out their their website, they have facts, post, they post a fact about a video game or development or secrets, uh, easter eggs and whatnot about any game. They usually do that, I think, once a day. And also check out their Facebook and YouTube. All this will be in the link, the, will be links in the description below. And, uh, um, thanks for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed. Also, thank you to Real Factions for letting me use his song. OCD, it kind of goes well with OCD Gaming, so I picked that. It was really catchy, uh, he makes really good music. You might know him from the person who made the Necromancer theme from Castle Crashers. Uh, actually, right now, he needs some help with donations to make more music. Uh, I'll put a link to his Patreon page down below. Also, you can just click right there on the screen, right, right there, and you can go to his channel and see what that's about. Also, you can click there to go to Did You Know Gaming's YouTube channel and subscribe to them. And their Twitter, Facebook is all in the description below. Real Faction YouTube is down below as well. 